with beer. Hey, podcast kittens! Welcome on our podcast again. It's Kathy Kata. Oh, lady beard! Welcome to another riveting edition of Cat, Cat with, with beard. beard. How it's been a long time, it's young lady. Been some time. It's twenty twenty-three. Exactly. It doesn't. Rhyme with flea. Yes, no, it, it does. It, oh, you told totally. a lie. I mean, like in theory, the last episode was just last week, so it's been a really long week for us. This week feels really long. The last episode was last week. We have a guest today. Anyways, yes, we have a guest today. Introduce yourself. Uh, my name's Henry Thurlow, and I'm an animator working here in Japan. Yes. Hey, and you're working on. Currently, I'm I'm working on One Piece. I'm part Cat with me, and we get the real thing here, ladies and gentlemen, is where all the best guests come to reside. Mm-hmm. Good job, production team. <laughs> Thank you so much. You've outdone yourselves. Great to see you, man. Thank you for coming. See you. No problem. Good, all good right. to be here. To this episode, the first episode is going to be about a life of an animator, mm-hmm. how you came became to be an animator, and mm-hmm. how other people maybe can learn from your wiseness and your skillness mm-hmm. and all of these things, wonderful things. And the next episode, we're going to focus on production of an anime. So what kind of, like, a, how is an anime actually made? What do you need to do? What are the steps? So, please, Henry, what was your start? What was your zero? What was your, I want to be an animator? What was your first anime? My my origin story. Um, That's about 16 questions just like <laughs> This yeah, poor man. 16 the, plus uh, one. Tell us about yourself. Okay, so the, the I mean the quick version is um, I I always wanted to be an artist since I was a little kid. Like uh, when even the kindergarten teacher and the first grade teacher asked, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" I always said artist. I've wow. never changed that answer for my entire life. Man of dedication. But right? I didn't know what that meant. Like I didn't know what I wanted to become, comic book artist or, you know, a painter or something. I just knew I wanted to draw. Like the, whatever this is, the you know, these drawing of characters, that's <laughs> I want to do something with that. Um and then uh, in elementary school, I was way too young to see the uh, HBO Spawn series in the 90s. Oh, Spawn, huh? But but when I watched that, I fell in love with animation. I was like, "This is the craziest thing I've ever seen." Well, like wow. I, I, elementary school. Yeah, Isn't I was still. In, I was probably in sixth grade when I saw it, and I probably shouldn't have yeah. been watching it at that time. <laughs> but but that actually goes to show, like, no one, it, at least in America, although I think the West in general, like, uh, animation isn't taken super seriously. Like it it it, it immediately is uh, assumed that it's something for kids. Mm. And so, yeah, when my parents probably saw the screen, they see a cartoon character, oh, I'm sure it's oh, fine. It's it, meanwhile, it's super rated R yeah, or beyond yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, um, God. And, and so, no, but I, I, I was always into also, you know, the, the normal animations on TV too. But, but when I saw Spawn, I was like, whatever this thing is, this is like film to me. This, something about this is amazing and I want to do this, right? And so that got me into kind of like cool, serious animation. And then from there, I wanted to see more. But there aren't many Western productions like that. So I very quickly found anime mm, instead. Cool. So like, oh, okay, well... There's not much like Spawn, but there is Akira, and then there Mm. is, like, a few years later, Ghost in the Shell and all these other movies, right? Um, And so once I decided animation was my thing, I just stuck with it forever. I was, you know, in middle school and high school. I'm like, I'm going to be an animator. I'm going to be an animator. And uh, so those are the kind of schools that I applied to. I went to... I'm from New York, hey. but I went down to uh, Delaware. If you're, oh, right. mm-hmm. yeah, uh, for a couple of years, uh, Delaware College of Art and Design for two oh. years, and then I went College of Art and Design, oh. which yes. actually to, let me quickly intersect. Go so ahead. You knew he wanted to become an animator, and you made some steps towards actually getting yourself the qualification there. Ah, uh, that's an interesting question. Yeah, so uh, not many people ask about my super, super early, like, uh, mm-hmm. high school era, what I was doing art-wise. Um, I, of course, took all the elective classes that I possibly could art-related in school, but then even after that, um, I had, like, there was an after-school art I don't even know what it was. It would be called, but it was like an it was an art uh, class, like an basically. Yeah, yeah. Club kind of thing, it, yeah, it wasn't even actually related to school. So even after I got out of school, they're just in the in the town. Basically, there was like another art class that I took, and I so I would always go there. And um, at the time, it was just kind of copying stuff that I saw. So like I wanted to draw uh, Spawn, or I wanted to draw Witchblade, or different comic book characters, and I would just you know look at the 
look at the comic and then kind of tr- try to draw it myself while art teachers would give me advice. I, I could mm. choose whatever it is I was interested in. Nothing was forced on me at that school, um, which in the long run was really helpful because I got to just sit with what I, I liked. No one was telling me, like, you must be a fine painter. Yeah. It, th- th- mm, this class yeah. that I was going to after school was like, have fun with art and we'll help you try to be whatever you want to be the best you can. <laughs> right. And so, yeah, throughout all of high school, that's what I did. I find it interesting because you, it seems like you didn't start drawing anime styles because you mentioned Witchblade and stuff. That's yeah. very American comic. Yeah. Right? That's yeah, yeah. the American art style, which is more realistic in certain ways than some anime is, right? Uh, it's, well, it's certainly different. Yeah, it's mm. stylized in a different way for sure. Mm. Um, and wh- which, so to cut ahead though, because that, that's a, that's a big point in my mm. life, which is what brought me to Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, when I, so I went to college, I studied animation, graduated, uh, after DCAT, I went to Pratt Institute in New York for the last couple of years, got a bachelor's there and then worked in New York city right as a freelance animator and i realized immediately like after just even a handful of jobs oh i'm never going to make the things i want to make like oh, oh really like, 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 well, well, oh that's the, the dream the dream crushing is happening gonna, now yeah, well like be, pretty, ooh, I, I was damn. well i was actually one of the lucky ones because most people um, to, to be brutally honest they graduate and then they just can't even break in whatsoever of course. because it's mm. hard out yeah. there you know so um let me just quickly you said that you yeah. got a bachelor's that was also an art uh yeah it, uh, at, I went to DCAT and I got an associate's the first couple of years uh, there in animation, and then right. I went to Pratt for the last couple of years for the four-year bachelor's. Sorry, so what, you what's have... Pratt? Pratt Institute is another art school. Oh, I see. Okay, so I thought had... New York. stood for something. Sorry. Yeah, I was wondering about that too. Thank yeah. you for clarifying that. <laughs> so, all of the degrees, all of the paperwork, all the extra work you've done was already aimed specifically at, anim- at animation, and you still felt like you couldn't find a job. Well, no. So, okay, I was one of the lucky ones who did find a job, but all that was available, and even to this day, mostly what is available is like advertisement stuff, mm. do a little animation yeah, okay. for this website, yeah. do a commercial. Yeah. Like the super earliest stuff that I did, I don't even I, I don't even have a record of it probably anymore, the files, because I don't get it was like uh, commercials for Comcast cable or just right. different things like that. Um I uh, again I I, I I still feel like I was actually lucky even in New York, though, because I did end up I I did do one TV series that I really enjoyed, which was a a Cartoon Network series called Super Jail. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, So season one of Super Jail, I did uh, I got involved in that. uh, Augen Blick Studios produced that, which is in Brooklyn. And uh, I worked there. That was an excellent year. Um, But even when I was working there, I was realizing like. Almost Almost all the jobs in, in the States are commercial stuff or they're going to be something super cartoony. Uh, I enjoyed Super Jail, but Super Jail was still cartoony. It yeah. was an adult cartoon mm-hmm. one, so I was lucky to have gotten one of those rare ones. But nevertheless, it still is not Ghost in the Shell. It's still yes. not It's still not like uh, the, the stuff that I was always hoping to do. Uh, and it just dawned on me, like, I'm sitting around when I was working on Super Jail, like, I'm sitting around the best in the industry. The p- the resume of all the people around me is unbelievable. Like I was mm-hmm. shocked. I was like, wait, I'm sitting next to the person like like one of the people that made uh, Celebrity Deathmatch. Oh wow! Yeah, and 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 just everyone there had amazing resumes. But I realized, oh, that means you just jump from like that kind of show to that kind of show uh, when they appear, and then in between do do advertisement stuff. Basically, mm-hmm. the point being, I'm never making my Ghost in the Shell. I'm never working on something mm-hmm. like that, Akira or Dragon Ball Z or Kenshin or any of the shows that I really loved. Right? I loved the old uh, super violent OVAs too, like Genocyber and uh, Vampire Hunter D and, uh, and yeah. those kind of things. Uh, but but I'm never making my Vampire Hunter D if I stay in the states, uh, and that's just a fact because we're never producing. It. And, yes. I, and I re- really sank in. And so, so okay, hold yeah. on, let me. So, what you're saying is that American <clears throat> art seems to be more focused on cartoony styles than realistic looking styles? I wonder if it's not even just America. It, it might mm-hmm. be almost the entire world outside of Japan. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's changing a bit because of the influence of how cool the stuff coming from Japan is. Mm-hmm. So, everyone's influenced by anime. But the rest of the world seemed to just be like. <clears throat> Animation is either a kid's thing, an advertisement thing, or maybe occasionally there's something artsy. You know, maybe mm. maybe there can be a segment of animation, mm. uh, you know, Pink Floyd's The Wall, something yeah, like that. Right. In artsy films, perhaps there's a, a time and a place for it. Mm. But overall, 
It's not like you, you can't make a two hour film of just dead serious animation. No one's going to watch that. That seems to be or seemed to be at least the mindset of the whole world outside of Japan. Yes. Uh, mm. Meaning that I needed to go to the one country doing it the way I, yeah. I, th that I, I wanted it done if I was going to ever do something like that. And so long story short, I basically just up and moved to Japan and was like, wow. first things first, I just need to be in the country doing what I want and then we can sort it out and see what is realistic. Oh. But it's quickly, that's a good approach to your career. For everyone, this is how I approach Japan as well. I just showed up and they yeah. figured it out. It's mm. a great approach. Yeah. Um, so you went here first and you, did you speak the language? No, I, I didn't speak the language. I didn't have really any connections. I heard about, uh, I don't want to give the super long version, obviously, of this. Uh, we're under some time constraints, but I heard from actually the translator of Hideyuki Kikuchi, uh, the creator of Vampire Hunter D. Yeah. I heard from his translator, Kevin Leahy, who's my friend mm. now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I met him in, in New York, and he, and I and I talked to him, and I was like, how, how did you end up in Japan translating this amazing series? Like, mm. And he explained, he to me, first you have to move there. He, he gave me that advice that I, mm. I took. Um, I had never even traveled outside of the states. Oh, no way. Uh, I think oh, I went to the dance. most yeah. different place I went possible. to the opposite mm -hmm. side of the planet yeah. Earth. Um, I, at first I was like, how do I even leave my country? I don't know. Because mm -hmm. that's what uh, probably a lot of people are saying. Like, well, I've never even traveled. Like, how do you just do that, right? Mm -hmm. I was in the same situation. I didn't have money saved up or anything like that. But when there's a will, there's a way. Like, like, mm -hmm. And so the, the way to Japan is like, oh, they will hire English teachers and bring you yeah. there. Uh, so I was like, okay. Then I pause my animation momentarily, but for the sake of my full animation career. Yes. Mm. But momentarily, for the sake of the overall animation career, for a year or two, I will get myself to the correct country, study yeah. the language, study the culture, um, and and do that. It's for the sake of animation, but it's not animation Good for attitude. a moment. Yeah, so you kind of wanted to have your foot in the door that's called Japan before. A hundred percent. When oh. I got Good here, attitude. there was no foreigners basically in the industry. There's a few. Mm -hmm. Michael Arias directed Tech on King Crete, and there's a few, huh. a few mm -hmm. other uh, foreigners whose names are in the credits of different things throughout the years. So I'm not like the first ever. Mm -hmm. But in, in general, there's there was was zero foreign animators working on any given production, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I knew when I approached the studios, they're going to look at me like, what are you even doing here? And sure enough, they did, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's a bit different now with Twitter and more international hiring. Sorry, sorry. Go for <laughs> I was it. trying to intersect you from time <laughs> to time. So you came here and worked as an English teacher. How long did you work as an English teacher? How did you work on your language skills? And when did you start approaching companies? Because obviously you would have to have some Japanese to approach <coughs> them because usually your resumes mm. and everything are very difficult Japanese and stuff. Oh I, I knew I had to at least interview in Japanese, so mm -hmm. I had to get my Japanese to the point that I could interview in it before I even start applying, otherwise it's useless, mm -hmm. right? Because I would walk in and then not be able to talk to the person sitting across the table from me. So I I came to Japan via the JET program. That, oh, was, yes. that, that was the one that, uh, that hired me and got me to Japan. And they sent me to Wakayama, Ken. Oh, Wakayama! Wow. I've been in Wakayama before. It's oh, yeah? very far away, though. It's very Tokyo far away, and and, and I and I was in like a super super rural little uh, Hidaka Cho. That'll get it, you good at the language quickly. And that's mm. why I got good at the language quickly because I can't even go to the supermarket without uh, asking for where's the paper towels or something yes. like that. Uh, in Japanese, mm. but but were you experienced in language learning prior? Did you zero. learn language in no. high school? Zero, no, zero, no. zero. I, n no, I mean, I. Uh, it really is all about taking the chance, right? Mm. Like, yeah. like I. There was really no reason to believe I could succeed in anything, <laughs> but I was just like, but it, uh, but it's my dream, and it's the only mm. thing I think about every day. I want to accomplish this. I want yes. to do this every day that I'm not either in the anime industry working on the type of anime I love or working towards it is a day where I'm not happy. Yes. And yes. so I might as well go for it, even if it's absolutely kind of ridiculous of a, of a dream. Yeah, so no language experience, nothing. I was just like, we'll do it. it we'll are, work it out along the way. You are a man of so dedication. <laughs> you had that goal constantly in front of yeah. you. How long was your jet time, and then how long was your like running for jobs time and <clears throat> trying to apply in the industry? Two years in jet in Wakayama. Felt I was good enough, came to Tokyo, with some money saved up from that, and then 
couldn't find a job for a whole bunch of months and lost all my money. Had to re, oh. re but then I keep I kept doing the same thing. So then I was like, okay, back to the English teaching, but not for a long contract, just a four month contract or something. Get myself back up. Then I'm going to reapply. All right, all right. I saved myself. I'm not like not being able to pay rent anymore and I quit and now I'm applying to and I lost all my money again oh god I need another four month contract oh. and just again and again and again like you could uh, I always kind of felt especially in in the middle of that craziness uh, like one thought stayed in my mind which is like I feel like the word stubborn and the word dedicated are actually the exact same word mm. just just yeah. just with all of us feeling just, this here right now just with the with the benefit of hindsight a person uh, that never kind of accomplished what they were going for people in the future will call them stubborn henry henry for example stubbornly would always lose his money and keep trying but if i accomplished it oh he was so dedicated mm -hmm. but it's the same thing so when you're in the middle of that hard moment even I, when I looked in the mirror, I was like, am I being stubborn? But I kept saying, no, one day we'll look back and call me dedicated. Yep. Mm. And so I just kept sticking with it until finally one studio was like, okay, you can start next month. And I was like, oh, finally, finally, finally. Ooh. And yeah. That's Sorry. fantastic, man. That is, uh, yes, you are a man of dedication, sir. So from zero language experience, from zero foreign country <laughs> experience, mm. you showed up. You teach English in the countryside, and so how your Japanese was at what level when you started applying for jobs? Did you do the JLPTs or anything like that? No, and I've never have, and I bet I would even fail that today, to be honest, yeah. mm -hmm. because I, I'm definitely a unique case, though. I, I really only ever wanted the language to work at this specific mentioned. job. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care if I'm book smart with it at all, mm -hmm. so long as I'm conversation smart, and, and even... The stuff I had to study was is even like not normal Japanese necessarily. Like there's industry frames related, and, yes, yeah, yeah. frame frame rate, frames, uh, time sheets. Like there's a lot, and, and then there's of course like slang and things like that that yeah. are used within the industry too. So I say words that my Japanese friends have no. What, what even is that word? Oh well, in the anime industry, it means this and this and this and this. Mm. But that's what I needed to study. I don't mm. care about oh. Did you did could you pass that? I bet I can't, but it doesn't matter because I yes. can have my uchiwase, my production meetings all day long yeah. in Japanese, and I know the words necessary to get through those. Mm. What I find really, really interesting here is as well, and I think that's something I want to wonder or listeners to hear as well is the it doesn't always go smooth. You mm. sometimes have to take a little path around it, even if it takes you two extra years mm. to get where you want to go, or like you said, you know, work, save up some, try, fail. Mm. Fail again. Fail. Fail harder. Fail better mm. until you finally get. Fail forwards. Go. Yeah, it, and I think that's that's a big lesson to learn. And we mentioned this before in some of our former episodes that it's not smooth sailing for most of us. It is really hard to work in the entertainment industry, whether you're an idol or whether you're an influencer or whether you're an animator. Mm. It is not smooth sailing. All those jobs look really sparkly, but you need to bring that dedication and that stubbornness yeah. to the table to make it happen. So one. Studio accepted you. They did. Can we ask what? which studio accepted you first up? Oh dear. Is it no, no, good. Can oh, I? Oh no, 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 no. The, the <clears throat> that's so well. So the struggle continued. I see. I, I, I don't like a bunch of years back. I did a, a interview with uh, BuzzFeed actually, Aye. and um, and at that point, I kind of told all as to what was going on. Once that, and all. At, well, the I cracked in at the very, very bottom. Okay. Right. Uh, and that means the lowest pay for the longest hours, oh, yeah. and the anime industry is super notorious for that. Oh, yeah. I don't want to be a broken record and repeat that that stuff. Like it, it's just very hard, right? Mm. But so the overall point, though, is that when I finally cracked in, I thought, "Hooray, my dreams are coming true." Mm. But the first studio, to be honest, didn't pay enough to remotely be able to pay for rent. Yes. Oh, so wow. yes. I had yes. to. I had to be able to. Uh, figure out how to kind of level up, get to a better studio, get to a higher position, and fast, right? Mm. Like my challenges were not over, they were just beginning essentially yes. when I cracked in. Yes. A whole new set of challenges. So uh, it all worked out. I ended up getting, I, from that first studio, uh, which was Nakamura Pro, I would ah. say, which is an in-between studio mm. generally. Okay. Then I went to Studio Piero for a while, which is the Naruto oh, production okay. studio. I really liked working there, but I just worked there for a year or so. It be, uh, no big issues, but um, 
le- like I was really always interested in being able to contribute key animation and kind of mm-hmm. leveling up in the, in the industry, and I wanted to have more uh, of my art style kind of contributing to the actual episodes and mm-hmm. things like that. And at the beginning, nothing you make really has influence, right? Mm-hmm. You're you're more of like a hand to help the episode finish production, but not one of the people who truly influence what the episode looks like. Maybe you want to explain what a key animation is as far as I understand is mm. a key animation is like you have this frame and then there's like the other frame where you want to get to. And the new people usually make the frames in between to get to the other place. The start and the end is done by the pros and then the new people have to kind of fill in the gaps. Is that correct? Essentially, though there's big differences between Western production and Japanese production. And that's kind of one of them. In in the West, from my experience, like key animation is like someone else might have laid out the background and things like that. And then uh, one key animator might put the main key poses. And then an in-between animator will uh, put all the in-between drawings, and, but also kind of spice up the the animation themselves when they realize certain things work and don't work, shift around the frames a little bit. In Japan, it's not really, I mean, Gengaman is the actual name of the uh, the position. It's, it translates roughly to key animator, but it's not really that. Mm-hmm. So it's Gengaman for the keys, and then Dogamon for the cleanups and in-betweens. And what it really is, is it's less keyframe and in-betweener, and more the Gengamon is like layout artist who lays out the whole background, the perspective, everything, puts all the roughs of the characters, puts all of the notes and memos for compositing effects that'll be needed later down the, the line, uh, pans and stops and camera work, things like that. Um, they'll make memos about all the shadows. They'll, uh, if, if there needs to be any nuanced motion in the in-betweens, they should draw another key or make some kind of uh, notation about that. Basically, the Gangamon's job is like a million positions in one. It sounds like a, almost a director. In or a an way. assistant director or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it sounds yeah, like yeah. a director because you also think about where's the light, where's the camera, where are the young girls. Uh, so you have a production meeting with the actual episode director uh, and the assistant uh, director, if there is one, before you take the sequences. But it really is like you're treated kind of like an actor and cameraman Mm -hmm. um, because they're like the storyboards range from everything from nice all the way down to scribbles. But by the way, some of the genius directors still use the scribbles. So that doesn't mean bad. It's just Mm -hmm. uh, the storyboards are used to, to uh, as, as something that can be used as a reference when you have that uche oase, that production meeting uh, with the episode director. And so the episode director explains when you're setting up your camera and when you're doing the acting of those characters, mm. keep these things in mind. Um, but at the end of the day, yes, it is the Gangamon's job. All right. <laughs> We're going into the anime topic, which we, which we will talk about more in, the, in okay. the next episode as well. Now, focusing back on your career. Mm. So you, you went between different companies and you said the pay was really low at the start. I heard it can be so low you can't pay rent a lot of beginning animators they have to live with their parents because they get like 400 bucks per month or something you, like you, you, and those are for like you know six in the morning till midnight type hours oh yeah well, like literally they? sleeping in the office kind of stuff yeah again i kind of don't want to be the person that just keeps bringing up the negative no stuff. bring it up no it's fine no, 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 no. So, the plus and but minus i will cause... just say this this is the all i'll say I, I, of all of the positions in the industry i think the one that needs the most help and the, I would really wish that the industry would kind of rethink the, the pay scale for, it, are those dogamon, which is mm. the cleanup and in-between animators. Right. There's, you know, pay issues everywhere, but that's true in every country and everything. The, the, the one place where it's, to be honest, really bad is the, those in-betweeners. So I really wish that that lowest position, because, you know, you want to support people who just got in the industry, even if they're not contributing the most important thing to the episode yet you want them to stay in the industry so that they become good enough to be able to Mm. one day be a famous director or animator is there an element involved when kind of the studio heads and so forth consider it a test of your dedication so how many you know you were willing to endure five years of well i think so i i mean i think the i think yeah that that probably is the mind frame and and i'm torn on it philosophically Mm. right because i actually do think being put in kind of a dire situation does kind of 
propel you forward, right? It's motivating. I, I have to say, I look back on the time as an in-between animator really torn because mm-hmm. at on the one hand, I recognize like, man, that, that those hours and that pay was so low, like that they were kind of taking advantage of me. On the other hand, I'm actually super thankful I did that for eight mm-hmm. months because it was eight months of real harsh. It was like my uh, my training saga, yeah. right? Mm. But it's but it really was because I, I left a totally different artist than I did at the mm. beginning of the eight months. Yeah. That was such intense, brutal training for eight months. But I got to say, like, I leveled up a million times. Mm. So I'm torn because I do think in a competitive field, this isn't a nine to five type job, right? No. Um, those no. type of jobs, I, I believe, need more benefits and I believe need et cetera, et cetera. I, 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 I want them to get better contracts and all of that stuff, right, for, for their time. When it comes to a competitive type job, though, it's a little bit more difficult because everyone around you is like, it's more of like a, it's like an Olympic athlete kind of thing, right? Mm. Like you can't tell the Olympic athlete like, okay, it's 9 p.m., go home, no more, Mm. you know, stretching today. Mm. No, like this is my life. I want to be here for as long as it takes to be the best. That's the mindset of most of the animators. So I don't like the idea of actually kicking people out. If people want to go through that training saga and be like, I want to work crazy hard for eight months, 10 months, whatever, multiple years, because this is what's going to bring the best artist out of me. I think they should be able to do that. They shouldn't be kicked out. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, But but at the same time, it is a job. You can't take advantage of people, you know, (laughs) uh, just because some people in the studio might be like, work me to the bone, Uh. make me the best doesn't mean you can set that as like a work standard, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it but it is a little bit more difficult than than just being like pay better and we're done. Mm-hmm. It's a competitive job and there's going to be people that want to actively come in on that Saturday or stay those extra hours to be the best faster. Mm-hmm. And did you feel sorry, Kathy? Did you feel that you were under particular scrutiny because you were a foreigner and at the stage the only foreigner? Um to be honest, I, my experience with that w- was always really positive. Okay. I don't, I, I didn't, you know, th- there's a whole bunch of stuff you can cr- critique, but uh, the, the, the one story I don't really have, I mean, there's of course little individual mm-hmm. instances, but overall, there's really, I, I have felt no, let's just say, racism mm-hmm. since Good. coming into the industry. Yes, I would be the only foreigner in the entire room uh, very often in my career up mm-hmm. until basically today. There's like a few people. But like um, that being said, I, I feel like that aspect of uh, I've always gotten respect. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, in fact, maybe even the opposite of, of what you're suggesting. Uh, people would look over and see a foreigner there and be like, whoa. A foreigner who's willing to, you know, work in this industry under under our, you know, kind of standards and things like that. Like, I really oh. respect that. So I, I, I think my Japanese co-workers have always been quite wonderful, to be That's honest. Fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. That is yeah. a very positive note. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, since you mentioned, like, the start of it was it's like a make or break thing, right? If you're just mm. half-hearted in it and say, oh, look, I kind of want to be an animator, maybe, you're probably not going to make Impossible. it through those Z- No, you'll never make it. Mm. It's, it's, it, it, it. it to me, it would be the same as being like, maybe I want to win a gold medal in yeah. the Olympics. Maybe. Mm. I'll give it a shot. If we'll see. Else comes Obviously, up, you're not the one who's going to win. Yeah. It's just impossible. It's mm. a very competitive thing. There's Everyone's trying to be, you know, there's only one episode director per episode. There's only one director per series. There's only X amount of key animators per episode. And there's a million people in the world saying, I want to be a a key animator in an anime. Mm. Well, that means it's super competitive. Mm. That means you have to be the best among 100 people Mm. who apply for that, right? I think you just described most desirable jobs mm. as well, ne? Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, it's it's, it's always really important because all those jobs that we're doing and they look so shiny, right? But mm. as you can hear right now, this, it didn't just fall into Henry's God, lap. It's, it's not something that we got handed on a little tray for us. It has been a heavy grind. So mm. after the hardest eight months, I literally, uh, like, it, 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 I imagine it like you standing under a waterfall and carrying <laughs> a tortoise shell. That was the eight, that was my, my mm. training, so. Standing on a wall, carrying a tortoise shell. That must have been tough, though, because you, they don't pay really enough for rent. I mean, that's not that's not just a myth. They don't for the the start. You don't have enough for rent. How did you? And you don't have mom and dad in this country. You don't have mommy and daddy to live at home. uh, When I did that BuzzFeed interview, a bunch of comments underneath were, uh, 
how's he paying rent if it's that hard? I, I, I bet his family's rich or something like that. Mm-hmm. No, not true. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, when there's a will, there's a way. Mm-hmm. So I went to the studio and was like, listen, I need to pay rent and the rent's this month. You know for a fact you're not paying me that. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, like, I need to take two days a week, a few hours in the morning to do, like, an English teaching uh, right. side thing, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, that'll at least get me that, a yeah. few extra mon a month, mm-hmm. right. mm-hmm. and that'll bring me over the edge. So, yeah. like, like it, again, you you just figure it out. You don't yeah. give up, and you just say, like, 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 oh, no, this is a tough situation. Well, maybe I have to quit the anime industry. Was never a thought that happened one time for one second in my mind. Mm-hmm. The thought was, this is really hard. How am I going to somehow succeed yeah. in this? Nevertheless, mm. and That's so yeah. Man. So you That's worked excellent. around the the not having mommy and daddy issue, <laughs> and you worked around the well visa issue. You have to have a certain limit uh, mon- yes, amount of yes, hours yes. and a certain amount of yes. pay, otherwise you can't stay either. Yes. So you worked around that by actually kind of working two jobs still. Yes. Yep. the The visa thing was difficult, but I, yeah. The mm. visa thing is very difficult yeah. for all of us. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Anyone who wants to come and work in Japan, yeah. the visa is pretty much your that, biggest enemy. Mm. Yeah, uh, it, it, that's true. And that was a very big discussion at the beginning of entering actually probably every studio. Mm. Um, uh, but uh, but there there are there are ways there are ways to just barely make it, and uh, <laughs> you know you, you you have to discuss that. Mm-hmm. So you went from one studio for literally you you went other the training studio to the next studio to the next studio. At which point in life are you currently? So let's see. The super quick catch up is Nakamura Pro to Studio Piero, Studio Piero to a small company called Bang Bang Animation, which doesn't exist anymore. But uh, I got to try out some key animation there on oh, some various cool. projects. Worked as a freelancer just for my apartment a little bit, saw how that would work, just taking work. And then um, with an art director friend of mine, uh, Arthel Isom, another uh, American working cool. here in uh, Japan. Uh, we kind of made like an animation studio, De Art Stadio. Good. Oh, okay. Arthel is the CEO, and he is still there. Uh, I ended up, I, I was there for years mm-hmm. as as their director uh, and one of the animators. Um, I've since left there and uh, joined the One Piece team at Toei Animation. So <laughs> that's where I am now. Uh, I had done some freelance work uh, while at De Art Stadio, actually. Mm-hmm. On One Piece and uh, on a whole lot of projects, JoJo's Bar Adventure, like Fire Force, like we did like tons of secondary key animation and key animation work on a lot of projects. Overlord from Madhouse, a huh. bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, One Piece, number one, I'm a huge fan and I've always been a giant fan of that. Like through the years, that's one of the series I've always followed and always really, really loved. Like all the way at the top of my list. Mm-hmm. And coincidentally, just working with them was really, really a positive experience like uh i i i was pleasantly surprised like my one of my f- absolute favorite shows is also the most fun to work on and i enjoy actually meeting with the people and working with them so getting to be a part of this team is not only a dream in terms of i get to work on one piece but also it's probably the most just uh I don't know, like well-functioning, everyone getting along, really kind of feeling like a family Ooh, type uh, okay. studio situations I've had in Japan. This is a really inspirational forward. story. Yeah, this it's is like very you're uplifting. working your way up. It's yeah. like racks well, to Well, at the moment, everything's temporary, and you know? Okay. You, so you take the good moments, recognizing it won't last forever. But mm-hmm. right now I'm at a high point and I really am happy. That's about. amazing. So we want to actually focus a little bit more on making an anime in the mm-hmm. One Piece studio in the next mm-hmm. episode. So I'm excited to find out more about that. But finally, do you have any advice for anyone who wants to become an animator in Japan? Um, my advice would be, you know, to, number one, obviously just really work on your portfolio and make sure you're really good. When you contact the studios uh, and when the con- and studios potentially contact you, you want to be good. Uh, if you're not good, then it was all for naught, all for right? Naught. Mm. Now, that being said, uh, even in just a handful of years I've been here, uh, I've been in Japan for 13 years. Oh, but handful. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But, but even in just the last, like, 10 years, it's changed quite drastically. Now you don't need to go through my entire training arc and oh, all right. of this stuff necessarily. People are hired as freelancers all around the world oh, now. Right. Uh, e- even I speak with a lot and contact a lot mm-hmm. working on One Piece. Uh, and so... Um, 
you don't necessarily have to come all the way out to Japan and learn Japanese and, and go through the entire checklist that I did. Mm -hmm. That being said, you'll still want to advertise yourself online and also be just aware of the Japanese anime process. Like you just being a great, you know, one thing I think too many people nowadays are animating scribbly stick figure type things online uh -huh. and uh, it looks amazing. But that does not immediately mean that you can draw all the layouts mm. for an right. anime. With shadows and exactly. wind uh, waves, and, and hair. Understand what what Gangamon are and what secondary key animation Ni Ganga is and what Doga is and recognize that if you do layouts, you should also do your own Ni Ganga. Wow. So uh, th those are con like, uh, you know, technical things. But for anyone trying to apply they need to understand all the technical things. Mm. So understand all the technical things in the Japanese anime industry. You can find it all online now. I couldn't when I was younger, yes, mm. but you can now. So study the process, study the words that you'll need to know to you, the Japanese words that you'll need to work in this industry. Um, and then just keep working on your portfolio and try to, uh, yeah, advertise yourself. You know, Twitter and different social medias can do that nowadays. Uh, at the end of the day, it comes down to your portfolio and your your seemingness, at least, to uh, understand the in entire Japanese anime production process. If you understand the process and are good, I think you can do it nowadays. Oh. Sorry, because you mentioned um, that you don't have to be in Japan to animate. Um, just to tie this all together, I think a lot of people have the image that there is a studio, you walk into the studio, mm -hmm. you make an anime in that studio, the end. A lot of anime is outsourced, right? A little, like certain scenes are just <coughs> perfect little animators are asked then to do this one scene or something. Is that correct? Uh, nowadays, I mean, there still is the studio you walk mm -hmm. into. Like, I actually do go into the studio mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. Uh and so there does need to be a team at the studio, the main team that's keeping everything together. If you want to be a part of that, right, and I, I highly suggest you do try to be part of that, for me it's really rewarding, right, to actually walk into the studio and then sit around the other creators. If you want to do that, of course you have to come to Japan or whatever country is producing the thing. If you want to just contribute uh, and, and you're okay with, you know, uh, like li living at your own place and just contributing via the internet, then you can do it from anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, be, but again, just be aware of the different job positions. So some of the th things can be done uh, internationally and online, like Genga, key animation and layouts, uh, because you can have a, an Uchiyo Ase, the production meeting, uh, via Zoom or something like that now. On the other hand, you probably are never going to become an episode director or, mm -hmm. or an art director or something like that, because that would require you to really be sitting around all of the yeah, sequences. It would be very difficult to take on that much work remotely. Mm. So the plus is, in theory, living in America, Spain, Italy, you could be working on an anime in Japan, but the downside is you would only get certain positions and you wouldn't be able to really be in the industry. Though. Well, so far, I mean, it, I, I do keep in mind, you know, someday someone will break that, right? Mm. Someone yeah, will right. break that glass ceiling also. And, mm -hmm. it, you know, uh, so... Then you'll be old God. Then you can talk about the olden days and oh, what you had to go through. I already, I already am starting to feel like I'm the old guard because things change so fast. Yeah, right. Again, like, 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 if you had asked me these exact same set of questions, even just five years ago, I'd be like, if you're not moving to Japan and you're studying your language, you're not getting even a single job. Mm. You need to realize there's a big, long checklist before you even apply to anything. Mm. Now, five years later... Actually, hey. actually, yeah. some of those yeah. some of those big important check marks. Actually, yeah, I don't need them. <laughs> a lot of more distanced working has happened, especially during the pandemic oh, as well. I right. guess the pandemic will probably has changed a lot of in these kind of things. It as forced well. some a lot. It forced yeah. probably all the studios to at least give a try to the uh, to the international hiring kind of mm. thing okay. because people weren't going to be all coming to your studio. You're going to be doing all the production meetings via Zoom anyway. Mm. Might as well try some people even farther than Tokyo yeah, if yeah. we're doing it this way anyway. Yeah, right. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Let's wrap this bad boy up. Let's and continue do it. The There's more episode. coming in the next episode. I am excited to ask more. Yeah, I don't want but, to But Henry, Henry, give us, yes. give us a little a plug. How can people find you on the internet? Oh, God. Uh, 
I'm on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I guess those are the two big ones. What's I your use. handle? Yes. Was it Hen- Henry Thurlow? Henry underscore Thurlow, I think, or Henry Thurlow Animator? Oh, Just Google oh, my you name. Add a with the show. Henry well, because I'm I, like off the top of my head, I kind of forget. <laughs> but yeah. like, uh, Google my name, Henry Thurlow, and Twitter, or Henry Thurlow, Instagram. It'll be there. Awesome. Yep. Kathy Cat, where are you on the internet? Kathy Cat, Underbar TV, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, all the shenanigans. Kathy Cat, Underbar, no, underscore, this, it's called underscore, damn it, I get it still wrong. Underscore TV, I'm not an English native speaker. And Ladybeard, where can people uh, find uh, you? Ladybeard underscore Japan on the internet. And Cat with but, Beard, the, yes. the YouTube and the so, podcast. You leave exactly. a comment and so forth, please. If you're listening to us right now, it'd be wonderful if you could actually check us out on YouTube. Then you can see our wonderful outfits. Mm. You can Kat see looks the wonderful today, glasses of Henry as well. Incredible. Thank you. I dressed very much <laughs> since I, I dressed in theme. If you know which season of One Piece is happening right now, then you know why I'm wearing Japanese-inspired outfits right now. Ah. Well, this just for you, Henry. Thank you very much. So, and we are going to cu- catch up with that and talk more about animation and One piece in the next episode so be sure to check that out again cat with beer is uh, from japan is the official youtube channel I'm g- <laughs> we also have a twitter cat mm-hmm. with beard if you mm-hmm. have any questions any comments or want to just tell us how much you love us and our outfits then check out at cat with beard on twitter mm-hmm. i think i got everything do i have everything oh, you got all the things no problem wonderful okay we're going to continue in the next episode of cat, cat with, with beard, beard. Bye. Bye.